Today, we wrap up Lexi Week here on the channel with, that's right, the last of the three weapons, looking at a Death Dealer-focused build, trying to land those ice hits, giving frostbites, card disruption, potential discards, and causing a whole lot of trouble for your opponent. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! Hey there, my Flesh and Blood Ranger friends. Welcome back to the channel, and thanks so much for joining me today for the wrap-up of our three-part series here on Lexi. Today we're talking the Ice Death Dealer build, which, as I've hinted at, I do believe is the most effective Lexi build currently in the Blitz format. Now, all this week, as part of our march towards Skirmish Season 9, I'm looking at three different ways to build our Elemental Ranger. We'll look at a standard Voltaire multi-shot build at my personal pet deck extra damage build using Shiver, and then finally, what I believe to be the best build of the format, Ice Lexi Death Dealer. Channel members, of course, have early access to all of these videos, as well as all of the existing Skirmish Blitz videos as of today. And as we go through this week, please let me know your thoughts and, of course, which is your favorite of these builds. All right, so this Ice Death Dealer Lexi build. So how the heck does this work? Now, it's using Azalea's Bow, the Death Dealer. For one, you get a draw, but that's actually a very key part to what this deck is trying to do from a certain extent because it gives you more cycling in terms, or it gives you more opportunities, I should say, in terms of getting Fuse cards in your hand. And by Fuse cards, I mean Ice cards so that you can Fuse with your arrows. Now, this is a very different type of, it's a very disruptive focus build, right? What you're trying to do is land Frostbites, trying to take strip cards or make them pitch cards, whatever it may be, right? Strip cards from their hand, land frostbites, and just make it very difficult for them to play. Now, I want to be, if, if you have played against, this deck's been going around for about a year and change, maybe a little more than that. None of these cards are super new, but in terms of the Blitz format, it's about a year and change, maybe about that. And if you've played against this, you know that it's very hard to do things on your turn, and a lot of times you end up having to go for the fatigue plan right? So there are some key parts in this deck that are very important that we'll talk about in terms of making sure that you can pump up enough or recycle your cards using your quiver to go through that, right? So I'm going to, I, before we go into the deck, I do want to give a huge shout out to Rick. So when I told him I was doing this whole thing, I said, hey, I know you've got the ice, the ice death dealer build. Instead of me reinventing the wheel, can I use your deck? He didn't even say yes or no. He just sent me the list. And because that's, that's Rick, right? So Thank you, Rick. And uh, I've made my own personal copies and screw up your stats or anything like that. But thank you so much for sharing this with all of us to go through. Okay. That I do want to point out just because it's Rick's deck doesn't mean I don't know how this thing works. This thing works really well. And we've been, again, we've talked about it on the channel here and there for a while now. All right. So we already talked about Death Dealer. Now, this is a perfect one to run Spring Tunic in and Blitz. So we talk, we've talked a bit about Tunic and Blitz. You really have to get to six turns to make it worth running Tunic and Blitz over a lot of other pieces. But you're going to go a longer time than this because they're either going to be, you're going to be landing stuff, make it harder for them to play. The game will, if you're doing what you want to do, the game will go significantly slower. Now the headpiece, we're not running New Horizon. So be very clear here. This deck is not about, this deck is not trying to sling multiple shots in a row. And in fact, I'll cheat ahead. You will see that Bolton Shot is not in this list. That's not what this list is trying to do. Again, it's trying to focus entirely on landing hits that will disrupt your opponent or taking all their cards and trying again. Now, there's a slim, there's not a lot of arrows in this deck comparatively to like a Voltaire build. And that's why Mask of Malicious Men of Men of Men of Men of Men of this mask is very important to be able to go to dig out what you need, okay? Now let's go look at our arrows very quick. We'll go back up to the top. So we're playing Blizzard Bolt. So Blizzard Bolt is Ice Fusion, one for five. If this was fused, whenever an attack deals damage, create a Frostbite under their control. Keep in mind, this doesn't apply only to this. If you can do some other attack, fair enough. It is, however, very rare that you're going to throw two attacks in one turn. You also have Chilling Ice Vein. This one's dirty. If this was fused, whenever an attack deals damage to a hero this turn, they discard a card unless they pay one. Okay, so now for both of those, we talked about all the attacks this turn. Very relevant, but they also say something very, very key. Whenever an attack deals damage. Okay, so now let's go back up to Shock Charmers. Okay, so Shock Charmers for two, the next time an attack action card you control hits a hero, it deals one damage to them. Therefore, right, if we are hit on Chilling Ice Vein, let's say we just sling one, 
you now have to discard a card or pay one. And then if you shock charmers that, it deals another instance of damage to them, meaning you have to do this again. Right, so you can see where this is going. They have to basically make sure this either gets blocked out or they risk a whole bunch of cards, okay? Right, starts adding up pretty quick. Now we're also running Cold Wave. If this was fused, cards and activated abilities cost an additional one this turn. So this one is kind of more utility, makes it hard to play d and stuff like this. But this one in of itself doesn't like do the extra compounding disruption thing, okay? So I think we've explained all that. Now I do, I did point out, and now by the, well, we do have uh, frost lock below, which is another arrow, but by and large, you really need your blizzard bolts and your ice veins and ice vein is your, is your big weapon here. Okay. So quiver of abyssal depths for three, you can recycle three different named arrows back into your deck. Okay. So you'd go blizzard bolt, ice vein, and highly likely to be cold wave. All right, so going through the rest, we have Ice Quake. Next attack this turn gains plus three. Whenever an attack hits this, create a Frostbite under their control. Okay, so this is on, this is not deal damage, by the way. This is on hit, so you would only create one Frostbite on hit. We have Invigorate, which is really dirty because the next one you fuse gains plus four. Now, it's the reason it's high payoff is because it's not as easy to do. You've got another card, and then you still have to have a fuse card and a pay card and an arrow card. But it's plus four, and it does things. Polar Blast, this card in the red and the blue. Target opposing hero may pay three or one on the blue. If they don't, you gain Dominate. Well, that's pretty good. That's really good. Okay, we also have Weave Ice. The next Ice or Elemental Attack gains plus three, and if it's fused, Dominate. Well, now we're coming in, we're fusing, we're hitting them, we're pinging them, making their life very, very hard. All right, we're playing, that's right, two copies of Dirty Dirty CLF. This card is... You want to slow down your opponent? That's what this card does. We also have Blizzard. Loses go again. This is the main deck board. One Cold Snap. Remember, Cold Snap played from Arsenal. You get a draw. Hypothermia. Attacks you control. Can't gain go again. You give that to your opponent. Okay. But it is ice as well. So you see we have a very different build here than a lot of the others. We have a lot more ice cards. We have ice being ice. Polar Blast being ice. Uh, Pulse of Volt Haven is in here. This one, be very careful with this one. It says... It's an instant, and the natural inclination here for many people, if you're using this for the first time, is you think of it like a lightning press or like a react or something like that, right? Akin to a react, I should say. This one says your next gains plus four, okay? So you have to play this before you play the other one, okay? All right, now going in inventory, he does have Battering Bolt for poppers. He runs Coronet Peak for certain matchups. So if, you know, again, target hero discards a card unless they pay one, just a little more disruptive. Heart of Ice also has AB1. That's the main reason there. Cross wrap, or yeah, the, the skull bone has AB1 and then boots for AB1, right? Now, of course, a major key to this deck is three of a kind. And you're like, well, hold on. So A, everybody knows it lets you dig if you're in trouble. But the main thing here is actually feeding resources for shock, char shock, shock charmers. That's really what you're after with this is you get your non-attack out, you have your arrow, maybe you have to dig for an arrow, but you're really hoping you get a whole bunch of resources for shock charmers so that you can just pay into it, right? Just ping, 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 ping. And if it's a nice vein, well, the world comes crashing down around them, all right? So that rounds out uh, Rick's list. Again, Rick, thank you so much for sharing with it, uh, sharing this with us. Um, one thing that you'll notice in here is that it doesn't have Arctic Incarceration. That's a completely valid card to put in if you feel that you need more ice. Uh, I actually agree with Rick's play of going a little more aggressive with the Invigorate. But again, that, that would probably be the right slot for like the Red Arctic. But remember, you don't have the go-agains and stuff that you need like from a Lexi standpoint, like a Voltaire standpoint. You don't have the go again at the end of the arrow to be able to throw those three. It would really just be a stall tactic. And that's why, in my opinion, the CLFs is the right play, right? So he's really counting on that to kind of stall, set up his big play, hit you, make you lose your hand, and then come back at you again. Okay, so that's that's the play. All right. Well, that's three Lexi decks, three different bows, three different play styles, rounds out the week. I really hope you all have enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun doing it. Again, thank you to those that, those that helped me, specifically Rick. And uh, leave us comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Or if you didn't, please just tell me you did. And go Commando.